Hi everyone, thanks for attending. My name is Len and I'm Consultancy Director here at CRMT Digital. Uh, CRMT Digital are a marketing operations agency from the UK and we serve B2B companies with their complex marketing technology and process challenges. Um, together with our customers, we help define and execute roadmaps to unlock value from their marketing investments. Um, I would like to introduce to you Anthony Policino, CMO at Magnolia a great leader and friend. With him and his excellent team, we've worked over the last year to get Magnolia ready for ABM. Hopefully this session will give you some insight into where to start when you are building your roadmap for change. Good to see you then. Great, so why don't we start with a quick introduction to Magnolia. So uh, Magnolia provides a real world DX platform. Uh, think Adobe, Optimizely, um, generally uh, mid to large size enterprises are using these uh, digital experience platforms to put out all their digital content uh, through all of their channels. And that can be websites, that can be apps, uh, kiosks, anything with a screen um, can be a fit for the tool. Uh, and Magnolia tries to create, uh, allow its customers to create fully integrated customer experiences and speed up digital delivery without trade-offs. And you can see a, a quick graphic over on the right. Uh, Magnolia is connecting CMS, um, marketing automation platforms, uh, digital asset management tools, e-commerce platforms, but all of the different uh, tools you need to realize uh, digital content in all of your different channels. So what does it take to modernize a B2B marketing team? Uh, I've been at Magnolia about a year and a half now. And when I joined, um, you know, I really saw a, a company that was uh, pushing 20 years old um, and had a marketing approach that was highly regionalized um, and wasn't kind of working in the optimal way that, that the other kind of SaaS companies I've been at have worked on. So. Uh, when I took a look at the team, how I knew we needed to grow, what we needed to change, uh, some common themes came up. Um, the first, uh, I really saw a passive opportunistic approach to marketing. Um, there were, you know, activities going on, uh, but there wasn't really a kind of lead engine in place uh, fueling growth. So um, this passive opportunistic marketing meant catching whatever happened to come across the website, whoever we happened to run into events at events, but it wasn't very defined. So uh, I knew that we needed to better define our target audience in order to really start seeing the growth the company wanted. Um, this broad global spread, uh, because marketing, marketing was so regionalized, um, it really meant um, different content in every region, different approaches in every region, different ways to measure success in every region. Um, but this kind of spread had its impact on the ability to focus, the ability to grow. Um, so I really knew we needed to kind of restructure from this regional approach to a single global team and a single global approach to marketing. Um, we also have limited budgets. So Magnolia is a private equity backed company. It's not a SaaS unicorn with a lot of cash to spend. Um, so I knew that uh, to reach growth targets, we needed to be smarter about how we spent. Um, one of the ways I know that we can do that was to look at account-based marketing as a path to more efficient spend. Magnolia has a, a very, very strong fit with a certain size of company and a certain type of company. Um, I wanted marketing to focus on looking at that audience, defining that audience, and then using spend in a, in a very dedicated way and focused way on that audience um, to get to growth. Um, and what that shows you is that marketing operations um, uh, is uh, when you're looking at it from a roadmap perspective, you can't just look at it um, uh, through the lens of a marketing strategy. Um, arguably the ambition of Magnolia to pivot to ABM is the most important fact uh, in the story. But if you break down what's actually required, there are actually some critical aspects that you need to uncover beyond uh, how you want to go to market. Uh, for example, how can we make sure your direction is actually scalable? You don't really have the luxury of uh, throwing extra resources um, at your team. Um, and uh, yeah, that means that you need to think about how you, you automate things. So technology plays a big role in that. 
there is a certain cost of ownership involved with uh, everything that you build. So you have to somehow uh, think of how you streamline your, your operation as a whole. Um, you can't build new capabilities without uh, you know, thinking about those types of things. It needs to be um, included in your roadmap ultimately. And secondly, what do you need to change within your organization to support this, this new direction? Uh, what does it mean for how you operate within your company? How do you stay aligned, especially with sales and product teams? And you need to consider that there are many different types of change. Not all of them you have influence over or not uh, necessarily driven by you. So you need to think about what those types of change are that you need to consider and, and somehow build that into your roadmap. And it could, for example, be legal teams that, that uh, ask you to uh, reconsider your position on you know, what legitimate interest is, for example. And then finally, what are the processes that uh, need to change to support your vision? Like, it's great that you found alignment on key parts of your ABM uh, program, uh, things like metrics, targeting, and so on. But have you actually considered how you review that output from, from, from all that work that you've done uh, on a regular basis? Have you got processes in place to, uh, to do that? But also, have you included how your sales team needs to change working like is that actually part of your your roadmap that those are significant bits of work that you somehow need to account for you can't just uh you know, purely look at it from a technology perspective um uh, especially when you operate in a complex organization you need to somehow make sure that it's all documented prioritized against all the other things that uh, that you need to do and it's easily easily forgotten um so what are the steps that you should really go through? So when you start building a roadmap, it's really easy to sort of jump into um, looking at your data, looking at your systems. I think if there's one thing that uh, I'd like to call out, or hopefully you can, you can take away from this, is that you should really start with identifying who your main stakeholders are. And that goes a little bit beyond just purely uh, your own marketing team and your leadership. You should really look at you know, involving sales, for example, your, your product team, and perhaps uh, uh, legal in some cases, um, it's important to uncover what their objectives are and to what degree uh, you play a role in that. And then secondly, you need to look at it through the lens of capabilities. It's uh, very easy to, to start looking at you know, the features that are uh, on the package, but really you need to uh, think about you know, what you can actually deploy as an organization. Um, and that really depends on you know, whether the wider team knows what is available to them. Uh, are they enabled to use whatever you've uh, uh, built? Um, do you have the processes in place to, to operate it effectively? All of that needs to be part of your roadmap because it takes time, it takes effort. Um, and to actually make sure that you focus on the right things, you need to somehow identify which capabilities are crucial to deliver on, on your strategy. Um, and that's something you can do through very clearly written use cases, like what are the things that uh, we re need to do and how can we make that uh, proper English so that everyone is um, in agreement on what you're actually um, hoping to do. And only then you start looking at things like data, analyzing your systems, identifying where there are gaps, um, and hopefully identify some of that unutilized potential and what you actually already invested in. Um, and that's why you need to start looking at, you know, where, where you might need to make new investments, all, all of that uh, good stuff. Um, um, and luckily, we have some frameworks uh, that can help you highlight what you need to deploy against some of these common objectives. And then ABM is a very common one, but there's there's many many others. So when I worked with uh, with CRMT, you know, we started with this this kind of ABM readiness uh, uh, chart here to kind of help identify priorities, um, help understand where we wanted to be and where we should focus. Um, and it was very clear for me that we needed to start at ideal customer profile. Uh, this is the second time I've had a, a fantastic engagement with CRMT. Um, last time I was building a, a really a marketing program from scratch. Um, but starting with this ideal customer profile would give me um, both the kind of technographic and firmographic data, but even more importantly, a data model that we could then use in campaigns to generate target account lists. Um, but to really help the business focus on where we thought the most fruitful opportunities were. And I think once you've done that, once you've looked at your, your ideal customer profile, a lot of that uh, uh, comes from that, right? So you, know, you need to think about who you're going to target before you can uh, start looking at what your actual addressable market is. What are the, the key data points that you can look at to, uh, to help you with, uh, with segmentation, for example? 
um, and also how can you actually activate um, you know using that uh, that that targeting that you've uh, that you've that, that you helped uh, build for yourself so uh, one of the key things that we did is uh, design and build an account scoring model in marketo um, but also look at things like abm nurture programs uh, within uh, marketo um, and then finally, what we're starting to look at uh, uh, as well is uh, things like data enrichment um, and so on. And then finally, it's that that inside piece as well. So how can we make sure that there are some key metrics from an APM perspective that everyone's aligned on? And how can we make that visible to the to the wider organization? You know, the, the, the value really came for me and kind of going from what we knew as tribal knowledge, what salespeople had in their heads, what I would see in Word docs, um, what I would hear in conversations to something actionable, something that we could build a tool set around um, and actually, you know, definitively know as we, uh, as we go out to market. So when it comes to defining ICP, um, you know, I think there's a lot of lot of standard tools that uh, pretty much everyone doing this exercise uses. Things like employee size, industry. Um, we had a very good idea of those things. We knew that, uh, for example, companies that see the most value in Magnolia um, tend to have more employees. Right? They're going to be that mid to large enterprise size. So a few hundred people working on multiple websites, not just two or three people working on one site. Um, industry, same thing. Magnolia is a very, very strong fit for kind of traditional industries like insurance, finance, manufacturing. We know that those um, tend to convert faster and easier than uh, digitally native tech startups, for example. Um, things like uh, geos play into the company strategy and where we want to grow. Um, and then, of course, revenue budget is a key one for any salesperson looking to close a deal. Um, the, the, the most interesting, and I think it's probably the, the most challenging part for CR, CRMT to help with, um, was this tech stack idea. So our particular product, we know, um, shows more value when a company is already using other key tools like a commerce platform, like a digital asset management system. Um, Typically, when companies get to a certain size, they move behind, beyond a, a base CMS into a digital experience platform that we offer. And that's something that can leverage all of these other tools that are already integral parts of a go-to-market model um, at a company. So figuring out how we could identify that tech stack um, and then build target account lists um, and an ICP profile that leverage it uh, were definitely where we needed CRMT's help. And here you can just see an example of some of those things. So um, when it comes to tech stack, we see a lot of our competitors over on the left-hand side or um, kind of mid-tier content management products we know that often lead uh, prospects to evolve into something like Magnolia. And we see the key commerce players that we see in the market and that a lot of our customers use already, um, along with some of the other tools. Uh, over on the right, you see some of the MarTech, MarTech stack uh, tools like Google Analytics, um, Netlify, Site Improve, all things that tell us as a vendor um, that a website is a key revenue driver for a prospect. Um, so that means they're a good sign that they'd want to hear about uh, our proposition. So when you're thinking about input for into ICP, um, you know there's there's a couple of things that that we looked at uh, in that process. One is um, you know Salesforce data, so you know, which deals have actually come through, and what's the the the, the, the what does the profile look like for that uh, for those Salesforce accounts? Um, you know, can we derive any uh, knowledge from that? Um, not just the ones that are actually converted into customers, but also the ones that uh, have opportunities. And in some cases also, which, um, um, uh, which accounts uh, have had um, uh, lost deals uh, against them. Uh, that's, you can get a lot of information from that. Um, the second thing is which accounts actually show some engagement uh, within Marketo. So you're essentially looking at uh, first party intent data. So which which accounts, which companies are actually engaging with your content, you know, suggest that they're, to some degree, um, what you're uh, showing them actually resonates with them, which is valuable information. You can 
get some um, uh, something from that when you're doing your data analysis. Um, and then the technographic data that's very important for, for Magnolia, of course. So um, they have a very uh, strongly defined profile when it comes to technologies um, that suggests um, a company is a good fit, like, like Anthony already mentioned. Um, but obviously there's, there's a couple of data sources that you can look at to actually get that information uh, built with was the one that we originally started uh, looking, uh, looking at to, to get some of that data. And then finally, um, sales input. So there's a lot of uh, knowledge in sales teams um, when it comes to what the, a company looks like that they can have good conversations with. So sometimes those deals um, haven't really resulted in anything, but they do uh, recognize that to some degree uh, a conversation progresses. And that means that there might be um, um, some uh, something in there that, that you can use in your, your ICP as well. So you need to al align with them and kind of validate your thinking um, and the, all the data that, that you've pr uh, produced before you can really settle on a uh, confidently on on an ICP. Cool. So when we talk about um, the value that I think Magnolia is getting from our engagement with CRMT, um, you know, we've really not only been able to define uh, our ICP and kind of create this data model, but then we've been able to move towards activation. Um, that means account lists for every region. It means um, being ready to start running with Sixth Sense or another ABM platform. Um, but another key, key value point for me was um, this tech audit. Uh, as a new CMO um, at a company that was almost 20 years old, I still hadn't wrapped my head around all the different tools that were in place. And because this regional model um, made things even more complex with some regions using one kind of data enrichment tool, for example, and other regions using uh, a second or third type of data enrichment tool, we were able to take a holistic view of our MarTech stack and consolidate some of those things and, and save even some dollars in that sense in terms of uh, extra tools floating around there. Um, now I feel like we've got an optimized stack uh, that we can continue to revise and grow, um, but it doesn't feel nearly as chaotic as it did when I first started at the company. Um, and the data audit. So um, like I said earlier, we had a lot of informal tribal knowledge around um, some of these things, uh, but not a way to put it into action. So. The data audit not only um, you know, gave me more confidence in the data that we do have in Salesforce and Marketo, um, but we have much more insight across the entire life cycle now. We're continuing to develop that out uh, with CRMT going forward. So what's next for uh, Magnolia? Um, so of course, we talked about the ICP definition. Um, Magnolia can identify their, their ICP, but um, it's now in interesting to actually overlay other types of data to see you know whether we can um, uh, supercharge their uh, ability to activate um, the first one one is data quality so you know we know that an increase in data quality will create a healthier database provide more reliable reporting metrics um, uh, but to get this right we needed to revisit the process for which data was collected to ensure it was compliant so it's the the, the boring star stuff of marketing of course um, um, but now that we have that in place, we, uh, we, we can be you know, pretty confident that uh, Magnolia can communicate uh, with our contacts um, um, in the right way. Uh, we've also started automating the process for leveraging uh, third party data. Uh, we started looking at the Zoom Info integration and really looked at um, how we can enrich data in a sort of an always on uh, approach, as both with Marketo and Salesforce. Um, this will really improve the account scoring, for example, and, and obviously help with uh, segmentation. And then finally, we've started leveraging uh, intent. So through uh, the Sixth Sense integration, we will start to deliver more intelligent account-based identification uh, and targeting. This is super key for me. I've got um, a new global BDR team. Um, you know, one of Magnolia's issues was this kind of gap between automated marketing and that first meeting with sales. So using the intent, using Sixth Sense, um, I'm able to arm our BDR team with actions every week. These are the, the hottest accounts. These are the things that show promise. Um, and it's leading to a huge increase in number of meetings booked already. So 
So uh, to sum up, um, you know, to, to our in our challenges, you know, this this idea of audience and knowing who we're targeting um, was really critical for me. Uh, CRMT has helped us really find alignment on targeting, um, and not only within marketing but across sales and product as well. So it's been really really key for us this year as we've continued to evolve our strategy, um, and we have really strong database footing now for the direction we want the company to go in. Um, in terms of data, we now have a, a data model that can support, you know, not only the strategy, but the kind of go-to-market tactical marketing we do, the campaigns we run, um, and the outbound work our business development team does. And tools, uh, we've, we've optimized our tool set. We've been able to streamline and get rid of some things that were extra and we're not delivering value. And we've been able to add uh, things like Zoom Info and Sixth Sense that we weren't using before as key parts of the stack to give us that um, insight and intent uh, that we need as we go to market. Thanks, Anthony, uh, for sharing all this. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for joining. If you have any questions about the session or would like to discuss how to start, start building your own roadmap, um, um, visit our website or email me directly. Um, we have some great tools that can help you uh, identify where you sit in your uh, maturity curve. So uh, reach out to me if you have any questions or would like some support on that. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. And thanks again, Anthony. Thanks a lot, Len. I appreciate it.